I'm Scott L. Miller, and this is my daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, we've got a viewer question asking about budgets for a family looking to move to Nicaragua in the next two years, and let's break that down. It's always great to go into a little bit of budget discussions. Everyone's always very interested in what it's going to cost to live here, and of course, huge variances, so we'll break everyone's down uh, situation down individually and see what we can figure out. So, let's get to Victoria's question about moving with her and her family to Nicaragua right after the bump. It's been a couple weeks since Victoria was able to send me this message, but Victoria says we are looking to move to Nicaragua, probably Leon, in the near future, next two years. What should our monthly budget be? I understand it depends on the type of home we live in. However, we are two adults, a 16-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. Of course, if they're coming in two years, they'll be an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old presumably, unless you already did the math. We homeschool and we are very outdoorsy. We're planning on coming for a recon trip in May of next year, so nearly a year away, staying for two weeks. Hopefully we can meet. Also, do you know of any expats that are veterans? My husband is an ex-combat medic. So let's start with, as always, the last thing. People always put the easy stuff at the end, so it's easy for me to hit. So yes, I actually have a number of friends who are uh, veterans from the United States. Uh, it is extremely common for American veterans to look at Nicaragua as a place to retire. It's especially popular, I think, not being a veteran myself, because veterans have a tendency to retire on the early side, want a more relaxing retirement due to a very non-relaxing pre-retirement, and uh, uh, often do have an early retirement uh, uh, financial situation that allows them to retire early, but generally not a really lucrative one. So coming to a place like Nicaragua, where they are incredibly safe, very welcome, uh, and, and their money is able to go farther, allows them, uh, for in many cases, for veterans to retire uh, at, at normal retirement age from the military, but that's early for most people, and, and actually be able to enjoy that retirement and live off of that pension and not need to go on and find a second career. Of course, you can do that in the United States, but you'd be really scraping to get by in many cases. But coming to Nicaragua, often you can live incredibly well on a military retirement. Uh, so that's uh, on that alone, right? So, so that is, I think, a very popular combination. Of course, Nicaragua is also very welcoming. So it's just it's just a nice, very laid back place. A lot of veterans are looking for beachfront living or or country living, farming, that kind of stuff, uh, because they really are looking for a way to to un wine from a life of, of stress, of course, right? So so I think that that's something you'll find uh, to be pretty popular just in our little community here. There are several in every community around Nicaragua. Uh, veterans make up a noticeable percentage of the expat population. So I think you'll find that to, to fit right in. Now for a budget. Now this is really subjective, right? In everybody's situation, what someone could do living on 1000 a month, someone else couldn't possibly do on three. So it really depends on your lifestyle and more your lifestyle than your home. If you're going to be living outside of the uh, expat communities, the enclaves, then the cost of your home is generally not a huge portion. I mean, it's always a significant portion, but not the biggest portion of your living expenses. That's going to be food in basically all cases, even for local. Even if you're living in the cheapest houses to the most expensive houses, food is almost always your dominant cost until you get super affluent and you're just starting to buy a lot of things. Uh, so that's something to consider, right? If you're looking at normal houses, if you're being super budget conscious for a family of four where you've got essentially three adults and a teenager or two adults and two teenagers, you're going to want a minimum of three bedrooms. Probably you're going to want four bedrooms because you're going to want that office space or whatever, but it depends on you. Depends what you're looking for. Uh, but assuming three bedrooms, which is pretty easy to find, you're going to be able to get into that if you want to be a little bit on the, the budget conscious side, under $300 a month today. Of course, prices are going up. There's just worldwide inflation and stuff. So maybe a little bit more in two years. That's a long way away. But uh, we haven't seen that much fluctuation in the last couple. 
but under 300 is absolutely doable. And I do know people in nice neighborhoods, good safe areas, a little bit less country, but often you pay more to be a little bit less country, uh, being able to get into a smaller three bedroom for around 200 a month, right? So that's a, a reasonable range. Getting towards 300, you should have a number of choices. Trying to get to 200 for a three bedroom will be a struggle, but they do exist, but you're gonna spend some time looking for sure. Uh, 300 then, Figure that as kind of a, a low end. If you get cheaper than that, then that's fantastic. Uh, most people who are looking to not just spend a lot of money, if you're looking for kind of, you know, traditional living, you could, in theory, go as high as $1,000 uh, on housing, but uh, you're looking at renting places that will include, you know, like like Quinta, so you're going to have a big yard. You may have animals. You're going to have a, it's going to be not the house that you're renting. It may be a bunch of space. Now, if you're okay having a small house out in the country or in a suburban area like I'm in, if you were to have like one of those three smaller three bedrooms out here, easily you could get into that for well under 600, maybe under 500, and if you work really hard, under 400, and in extreme circumstances, under 300. That's sort of your range. So budget as you kind of see fit. If you're if you're just needing to stretch every last dollar, shoot for 300 to 400 and you'll probably be safe. Uh, if you want something that's a lot more comfortable, figure getting upwards at least uh, of 500, but maybe get a little space around it. It's so subjective. Like it's, I have no idea. If, I, if we were to go back to, to Texas where I live for a really long time and you said, what well, would it cost for, for these kinds of things there? I'd be like, ah, the range is so big depending on the neighborhood, uh, just what you're looking for. Or, you know, do you need a, you know, all it takes is someone saying, no, what I want is a giant atrium or a huge swimming pool. And suddenly there's only one in the entire city and you're going to spend 750 because there's no other option, right? Like there's just, there's so many variables that it's uh, extremely difficult to say. Now, typically, Right. Uh, we say that for a two person family, you really want to be above twelve hundred uh, for two people. So four people, obviously, you don't have to get rent for all those extra people. Right. You're all in one house. Uh, but getting towards two thousand, you it would be very difficult to live under two thousand dollars a month. Uh, and that's, you know, of course, rent, food, entertainment, transportation. If you are uh, going to have a second car, that's going to add a lot of cost. If you're uh, going to be paying, you know, obviously we're not factoring in things like uh, university bills or anything like that. Uh, but homeschooling, of course, uh, you're able to keep your cost down. You don't have to commute to school. You don't have to commute to the office. You're going to be home all the time. One good Internet connection for four people. Internet, you could get by at 30. You're really going to want to spend closer to 80, especially with multiple people doing homeschool. So that would be important. I think in an ideal world, you're really going to want to have a budget a lot closer to 3000 to 3500 a month, and that's going to give you, you know, very comfortable living. I mean, this is a family of four that we're talking about. You're going to want to be able to go out and do things. You're going to want to be able to go out to shows and restaurants. You're going to want to be able to travel around the country and do different things. You'll want to be able to have a car. And so you're going to want to have a little bit more. Can you survive on less? Absolutely. And I think in many cases, it's better to kind of approach from the other direction. Nicaragua is, and maybe this is the most important takeaway. If you're going to be in the Western Hemisphere, Nicaragua is, to the best of our knowledge, the lowest cost or equivalent to the lowest cost location that you can find in the Western Hemisphere. It is, yes, there are cheaper things in, there's lower income in Haiti, but because of the war going on or the near war, cost of living is much higher than Nicaragua. Colombia famously has similar cost of living, but there's basically nothing else in the region that comes truly close. Paraguay is not too far off. But when you're talking about uh, budgets, Yes, you can look at it from what kind of budget do I need, but is that really relevant? What's most important is how could you get it any lower? That, that is possible. If you're looking for your money to go farther than it does in Nicaragua, you could be looking at Southeast Asia or uh, Central East Africa. These are, uh, to my knowledge, the lowest cost places in the world that you could live. You could also get your money to go similarly in East uh, Eastern Europe, but not quite as far, just relatively close. But when it comes to being able to come from the United States, actually have flights to get here, most of those places, the flight cost to get there will use up significant portions of your budget. If going to Eastern Europe costs an extra $500 per person, well, that's $2,000 that you need to spend just to get there. That's a lot of needing to be cheaper to compete with Nicaragua in the long run. If you ever have to come back to visit, you're going to eat that budget again. So in most cases, for the average person, I believe, coming from the U.S. and Canada, Nicaragua represents the strongest power that your money can have anywhere, anywhere.
right? That it's in the region, yes, is part of why it's so cost effective, but it means that there's simply no way to have your money go farther. So that's probably the most important thing. A lot of people ask me about these budgets and, the, you know, people say, well, you know, can I survive on? Well, it doesn't matter if you can survive on that or not. If that's what you have, this is where you're most likely to survive on it. If you're not able to survive here, there's nowhere that I can think of that you'd be able to survive. So that may be the biggest takeaway is that this is how you make whatever money you have plausible. Now, if you have more than the bare minimum, of course, this is where you get more bang for your buck. And if you have enough money, then you get to choose places based on other factors, right? Well, where do I prefer the weather? Where do I prefer the, the food or whatever? And that's fine. But if you're in the position where you're worried that your budget isn't going to stretch far enough, you're worried that it's not going to be significant enough, that it's not going to be sufficient, then you need to get to Nicaragua because nowhere else is going to be better. It is a fraction of what the U.S. or Canada is. It's not that much less than Honduras or Guatemala or, you know, Colombia, but it is less and certainly not more. So if you're looking to just be able to make it farther, this is where it's going to go farthest. So if that's your concern, no matter what the amount of money you have is, 1000 2000 3000 then Nicaragua is still going to be your answer for this is the most affordable that you're going to find. The only time that you have to consider budgets in a different way is if you're doing something like, and I know a lot of people are in this boat, so it makes sense. Say if you're going to be living, for example, in the United States and you are going to take a local job or you're wondering if you're going to be able to retire based on the budget. Or if you are able to live with family, for example, and you don't have to pay rent if you're living in the United States, then of course that could make sense as well. If you have really no expenses and have very little income, then the only thing you have to do is cook at home. You can make the U.S. cheaper if you were going to be in Nicaragua you'd have to rent a place or buy a place or whatever. So those kind of differences do exist. And that could make sense why someone needs to look at the budgets uh, or and I understand that people just want to be able to plan, right? You want to be able to look forward and say, well, this is how much money we need to set aside. This is what our lifestyle will be like. This is what we got to make accommodations for. So I totally understand the desire for budgeting and trying to understand what things are going to cost. Absolutely. It's just, I want to make sure that people understand, because sometimes I have people who come here and they say, oh, this is too expensive, and then say, well, I can't afford to live here. And I'm always like, but that means you can't afford to live if you can't afford to live here. And of course, I always have enough money to live here without a problem, easily double, triple, or quadruple what many people live here on all the time. It's just that they, they say they can't afford to live and they, they just don't want to live in the way that that would require them to live. What do they end up doing instead? I have no idea. We've had a couple of videos recently where we talked about people who came in and decided it was too expensive and moved places vastly more expensive uh, and spent a lot of money to do so. It's always strange when people say it's too expensive here, they always are involved in some of the most uh, wild expenditures of money. So I consistently see people seeing Nicaragua as being expensive when we see them as being very uh, very casual with their spending of money. They'll simply buy extra food. They will go to expensive places. They don't do things to save money. Spending money like they're very, very wealthy and then saying they can't afford the lifestyle, uh, whereas those of us who live here all the time and, and live normally find everything to be about half the cost that they do. So uh, some of those things uh, are important to keep in mind, that it's just if you're actually looking for where your money is going to work best, then Nicaragua is your answer. I understand you still need to come down and check it out. Absolutely. That would, it would be terrible to come down and find that you can afford it, but you don't like it. That's not something you want to find out. And I think that in many cases, people discover that the whole moving away from their, their home or moving to a new country, just are, those are the things they don't like. And instead of saying that, they say that it's too expensive, thinking that so many places are, that uh, it will sound plausible. When you're talking about Nicaragua, though, that actually makes you sound completely crazy because why would you move to a place that you knew you couldn't afford when it didn't cost any more than you were expecting and it's actually cheaper than any other option that you have where are you heading off to that you're going to it doesn't make any sense right so 
it's one of those things I always say. It's the I love Lucy effect, right? If you don't want to admit the reason, the worst thing to do is just lie because the chances that your lie is going to make sense is so low. It's never going to make sense. You're going to say something and people are going to go, well, that's not the case, right? It's just like the guys in Paraguay who's like, I couldn't, but you can't buy a house in Nicaragua. And everyone who's here is buying houses in the exact same situation. And we're like, what are you talking about? You don't even have to be here. You could just, you could buy a house right now from Paraguay. All you have to do is do it. Like it's so easy and it's so stable and safe, but he thought that no one was going to call him on it. And it didn't even occur to him that that was not a reasonable bluff because he didn't know anything about Nicaragua. He just wanted to make up a reason. So he said something and didn't realize how ridiculous it was. Well, those kinds of things are always going to be the case. So that is a decent reason potentially why the stories that we get of people leaving uh, really come down to they don't want to admit that they didn't do planning or whatever. So they mentioned the not being able to afford it. I had someone actually claim you had to make over a million dollars a year to be able to live here, which they were probably exaggerating. But the entire concept that the cheapest place there is to live in the Western Hemisphere would cost more than the most expensive place to live in the Western Hemisphere, because most Americans and Canadians are very aware that they don't make a million dollars a year and are still able to live just fine. And they imagine that even living in high cost places like San Francisco or New York City, if you're making a million dollars a year, are not going to be too bad. Your money will go pretty far when you have a million dollars to blow per year. Even if you're paying very high taxes, the leftover bits still go pretty far. So back to the actual topic at hand, for a lot of outdoorsy activities, Nicaragua is going to be outrageously cheap. There's a lot of outdoors and it's very inexpensive. It is important to note, though, that a lot of activities that people do outside in much of the world don't really exist here in Nicaragua. So some of those things that you do, just be prepared that it may be surprising. Now, it depends what your outdoorsy activities are. If your common activities include things like gardening and, you know, doing things on your own property and you like to grow things or you like to just spend time running around the yard kind of stuff, I don't know, playing volleyball, I have no idea, then you're going to be in great shape. Just get a spot where you have some of your own outdoor space and you can put in a lot of outdoor effort without a problem. You want to have orchards or gardens. You're in, I mean, it doesn't get much better than this, but you want to do a lot of outdoor things like, oh, you want to go to parks that have like hiking trails and, you know, organized outdoor activities of some sort. You're going to find that it is far few and far between. It is not a culture where people really go and do outdoor activities activities per se. Everybody's busy if you're going to be outside. First of all, it's hot. So if you're going to go do things outside, people want to make it count and people don't put on shorts and t-shirts here. They're putting on, you know, uh, uh, button down shirts and jeans, even when they're going out to do things in the middle of the day. So hiking for fun gets really hot and people have to go real places on foot or on bicycle all the time. So looking for additional opportunities to go do that doesn't really make sense most of the time. So just the entire idea of outdoorsy activities, yes, they exist in the country, of course they do. And there's beautiful locations all over the place, but it's not the same as North America or Europe where there are just trails between towns or special, you know, parks with hiking trails all over the place or just lots of outdoor activities organized all the time. You're going to find that it's a lot more distance between things and a lot less common. Uh, now, of course, there are just lots of, you know, roads. I like to go walking. I would love like European style trails that go between villages. I love that when I used to live in the Spanish mountains. That was fantastic. That doesn't exist here. So instead, I'm walking on the roads or the semi-roads all over the country, and I find that very fulfilling. I like being outside. I like getting to see culture and people when I'm out, so that works out really well. I walk through the farmlands, but I'm mostly doing so on roads. I'm from New York. I'm used to where you could just hop into any field and walk through that to go someplace, but normally you're going to hit hedgerows, so we didn't do that very much. Here, similar things exist. Little rivers and hedgerows everywhere make it very difficult to go through in some of the wild places, So, and, and almost everything has fences around it. That kind of uh, open, like in England, like, like every field is just open for people to walk through, that does not exist here. So uh, be, be aware that when you come to visit, check out the outdoor activity concepts that exist to try to understand how that's going to work for you. Is there going to be the kind of outdoor activities? I have no idea what you like. I have no idea what people who say that like in general. I like being outdoors, but I don't call myself an outdoorsy person. I like to use my own uh, uh, mechanical power, right? Bicycle or walking or whatever to travel to different places and experience the place that I live in. So I like being outdoorsy in that way, but I don't like playing volleyball on the beach. So it all depends on how you define it and what you're looking for. Nicaragua does have beautiful outdoor spaces. 
but you don't always have the opportunity to just go out into them. But there are places where you can. Now, of course, some of the volcanoes here, like Cerro Negro, that used to be open now, because it's gotten dangerous, uh, require a guide. Too many people are doing it, and it's too easy for someone to get hurt. So to summarize, I'm going to say that I think in an ideal world, you're going to have definitely more than $3,000 a month to be able to live really comfortably for a family of four. You want a little bit of breathing room for sure, but no matter what your budget is, if you only had $1,500, you know, half that, could you survive on that? Absolutely. Nicaraguans do all the time, and that would be not even as much as this. With $1,500, you could rent a $300 house, you could get minimal internet access, you could, ha you could even own a car, you could cook at home, you could go out to eat from time to time, and you'd be living very, very leanly, but you could make it work even on that budget. But of course, if you're going to be at that probably you're going to want to look at finding some amount of online work or finding some way uh, to make extra money. Of course, I never recommend investing in country unless you have excess funds. It is just way too easy to lose everything. The assumption is that you will lose everything. And of course, you're not allowed to work here uh, unless you are a major investor. So those aren't things that you can really entertain, but working remotely, doing some kind of consulting or something back to the United States, not a problem or back to Canada or whatever. So th that would be Probably the way you don't need to do it full time if you're bringing in 1500 you can, you know, find some very uh, easy part time work that's going to bring in enough to get you up to two or three thousand dollars and that will make all the difference at three thousand. I think you can live incredibly comfortably here, uh, especially if you're not splurging on a really big house or anything. Um, so it's so subjective. It's so difficult uh, to give these budgets, especially when it's a in this direction. If you're saying, this is how much I have, how much can I get for that? We can break that down a lot more accurately. If you're saying, this is the place I want to live in, right? If you choose Leon, it's going to be one thing. Just choosing the next town is going to change those numbers a little bit. One little change, like, oh, we need a three bedroom or we need a four bedroom. We don't need a yard. We do need a yard. We want uh, to cook at home. We want to go out to eat. We want to go out to eat at a sit down restaurant, not eat on the street. These things will change the numbers dramatically uh, from, from one person to another. So there's ways to get it really, really low. And there's ways for it to be higher. And I think especially with expats coming to uh, a place like Nicaragua, you have a very large range of anticipated uh, uh, desires, right? One person is like, I just want to live in a little tiny shack in the middle of nowhere, and I don't need to talk to anyone. I don't even need air conditioning. I just want, and I have friends like this, and they live at incredible incredibly low budgets. Uh, but then other people are like, well, of course we want sealed houses. Of course we want to be air conditioned all day long. Of course we want super high speed fiber internet and we want, you know, three cars and, and it adds up and all those things are affordable and doable, but they're, you're not going to come in at $1,000 a month and be able to have those kinds of things. And so there's, there's a lot of expectation settings and your trip next May is going to answer a ton of those things very quickly. You'll be able to see exactly what a house that costs two or three or $400 could be like. You'll see what houses that exist in different types of the markets are, right? Because just knowing what houses look like is something that's very difficult. If you're going to uh, be out in the country, especially in the city, I think we have a better ability to show you, like, here's a whole bunch of city houses, and you can kind of get a picture. But out in the country, it's like, here's this huge swath of country. Here's a house we're going by. Even I, I have no idea what's like inside those houses, because you never get invited in. They're so far out, you have no idea how to meet those people, All right? So uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a learning experience for sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, right, I, I think you have the numbers that give you a basic idea of what to expect. And if you want to give us a number you actually have to work with, we could probably build up what your life could be like and what we might suggest based on the budget that you have access to. Uh, but obviously going the other direction, the sky is the limit. It's totally subjective. So um, I'm hoping that the information we gave you is going to be useful. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I'll see all of you tomorrow.